April is up, so it's time to recap the latest and greatest indie games. But just before we do, let's get some news. Supergiant Games, the peeps who bought us Bastion and Transistor have announced their third game, Pyre. Unlike their other games, Pyre will give you control of multiple characters. It'll be coming to PS4 and PC sometime next year. At PAX East, the new demo revealed that Cuphead will have a shop run by a pirate pig and an easy mode. It wasn't shown in the demo, but there will also now be platforming levels in between the boss battles. 2014 Game Jam creation, The Lion's Song, will be getting a full four episode release, with the first installment to hit in the next couple of months. The game is a story driven adventure that focuses on the internal struggles of artists and scientists in the early 20th century Austria. A new GDC demo of Return to the Obra Din has given us our first glimpse of the gameplay since its announcement in 2014. The game, which is Lucas Pope's follow-up to Papers, Please, has players solve the case of a missing ship via replays of its crew's final moments. We begin our honourable mentions with the early access title Seraph, a super acrobatic side-scrolling shooter. The core of the game is solid, with room to grow over the next six months before full release. Halkion 6 is another early access game, and a Kickstarter graduate too. It's a little bit XCOM and a little bit FTL, with great art that's very playable as is. Among Thorns is a cyberpunk point and click adventure featuring the fabulous pixel art of its creator Matt Frith. It's brilliant and rather short, so there's no reason not to check it out. Kim is an early access game based on the Roger Kipling novel of the same name. The presentation, consisting of its art and sound, gives a great sense of Kim's Indian world. We'll be watching this one closely. Stories The Path of Destinies is an ugly mouthful of a title, but thankfully the game isn't so gross. Stories is basically the love child of a choose your own adventure book and an action RPG. A branching narrative leads to 24 different endings, but only one of them does Foxy anti-hero Reynardo survive. To get this ending, the other story paths need to be played. This will uncover four unconditional truths within the game's world, which will then guide you to the right path. So it's kind of like a game within a game. Each story is a manageable half an hour, but I can get a little repetitive if more than a dozen are played. The combat is essentially transplanted from the Batman Arkham series. There's a lot of crowd management counters and even a hookshot. All Up Stories is a real cracker, giving a great level of agency to the player's choice even if it can get a bit same old at times. Drinkbox Studios, creators of Guacamelee, returned with their new game, Severed. The PS Vita title continues the glorious aesthetic from Guacamelee, but differs in its gameplay. The touch-based combat consists of swiping enemies, not too dissimilar to how fruit is sliced in Fruit Ninja. The swiping isn't a blind spam fest. It's more methodical, and they need a section of the enemy's patterns to be effective. As in Guacamelee, backtracking is a huge part of the game, Albeit, the narrow corridors and first-person perspective of Severed make Discovery a more suspenseful experience. The title comes from the protagonist Sasha, who we find with only one arm at the game's start. Following her into the surreal and haunting Aztec underworld uncovers a dark tale about dealing with trauma. Severed looks beautiful, and it's the only game that makes us wish we owned a Vita. All the information about your collaborators and the details of your next target. 1979 Revolution Black Friday tackles the Iranian Revolution within the constraints of two hours. Given this, it does a noble job. The story follows Reza, an apolitical photojournalist embroiled in the revolution. He, along with the rest of the cast, are made convincing by superb voice acting and fairly solid writing. The scenes are to the point, and the cuts between them are quick, which keeps the action rolling. From the very start, you can feel the pace of the game and the revolution. 
It's this recreation of chaos born from uncertainty, passion, and a power vacuum that offers an insight into what the revolution may have been like. The game prescribes the telltale formula, however, the quick time events aren't actually needed to build suspense, and the dialogue choices are offset by telling you which decisions will have long term impacts. Also, a really neat feature is that when you take a photo, it's compared to a real life picture, reminding the player of the realness of the game's events. Both a thriller and a history lesson, 1979 Revolution Black Friday is a bold idea well executed. Hero. Sunder Slayer. Legend. The Banner Saga trilogy marches on with the release of its middle chapter. It's darker than the original, with even higher stakes and death lurking in every shadow. Rather than be a downer, this makes the moments of relief more cherished and the emotional investment greater. The story is still the priority, and is once again carried by the epic score, magical animation and understated writing. But the combat, which for us was the bane of the original, has had significant improvement. The battles in the original were plagued by a staleness bred by a lack of variety. This has been directly tackled by the inclusion of new friendly and enemy classes and abilities. Also, rather than be breaks in the story, the battles feel more linked thanks to decisions made in the story having little impacts on how the battles play out. It's a treat to return to the story and world of the Banner Saga and see improvements too. Legends tell of an impregnable fortress, and in its depths lies a weapon of immeasurable power, a gun that can kill the past. The combination of roguelike and top-down shooter has emerged as a success in the last five years. First came the Binding of Isaac, and then Nuclear Throne. There's nothing much about Enter the Gungeon that makes it stand out in comparison to either of those games. Rather, it combines the pair to produce an experience that's familiar yet new. Isaac players will notice the Zelda dungeons and similar zany theme. Enter the Gungeon isn't about the Bible, but obsesses over guns to a point that's both ridiculous and hilarious. From Nuclear Throne, Gungeon borrows a virtually endless catalogue of weapons, as well as the pleasure of uncovering them all and then testing them out. As you'd expect of a roguelike, it's extremely hard, but can be chipped away at with a 20 minute playthrough here and there. It truly is a magical recipe, and Enter the Gungeon cooks up a perfect recreation with an extra dollop of gunpowder on the side. So those were the best indie games of April. Thanks so much for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indie Former.